All right, so continuing here, we have all of these various screens for our LinkedIn, and one of the important ones is then your own account. So if you haven't looked at this yet, you can go to Me and then View Profile. So this is what people will see when they find you on LinkedIn. And so on mine, I've got a photo, some pictures, education, and, and all of that. So this will be filled out as completely as you need it to be complete, however much you want to put in there. Now, yes? Can you change the, the picture behind your, I mean, you have to draw that, what, what shows up there, or that is something that... Uh... Yes, you should be able to, there's going to be a pencil on various aspects, and then you can click if you want to change some of this stuff over here, this pencil should allow you to change your photo and this background image. So with LinkedIn, your profile, on your profile screen, best practice is to use a professional looking headshot of yourself. So if I'm going to use LinkedIn as Victor Campos to promote the business PM the Interactive, I want to put my best foot forward. I want to take a photo of myself, have it look pretty well, pretty nice, good lighting, not a full body shot because that's going to shrink down in the various screens of LinkedIn, that photo is going to be shrunk down. And if it's the full body shot, it's going to be really small, hard to tell what that is. And then when people are looking at these on mobile devices, it's even smaller. So I have here headshot. So it's everything, you know, head and shoulders up, basically. Not a full body shot. Dress well, or at least for the job, for the, you know, for the industry. So I, I, I would dress in that, I don't know, California business casual if I want it. I'm not really going to wear a three-piece suit or anything like that. I don't, I don't need to. That's not my industry. But if I am like a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, I'm not going to be there in a t-shirt, probably. I'm going to look professional to represent the company. But what if my company is like a, a surf, a surfboard company? Maybe I will wear something casual, beachwear sort of thing. It depends on, on the business, the industry. So just as a sort of a quick look at the range looking at the um, at the connections that I have here so you see most of these someone people try to dress pretty nice uh, Constantine is a cool guy he travels all over the world but that's not a good photo you, know, you can't tell you can't see him you see a sort of a beach scene but that's nice but that doesn't quite fit Freda here looks really well Sandra looks very good uh, the Dean, etc. So most of these are pretty close in, just a headshot. You can be a little artistic if you want, black and white. But there aren't any that are that are bad. This one with Jose, this is the one that I would sort of like go toward like that one is not a very good one. That his the name of his business is Abacus Systems. You don't really want to put your company logo here because this is not the point of it. It's the point of promoting yourself. He's the VP of Web for Realtors, but he's not putting the logo of his business. He's putting himself because he is one of the faces of the company. Monica's photo here, again, that one could be a little bit more professional. It seems like stuff is happening in the background. It seems like a harsh flash, which is never flattering for us when the, when the harsh camera flash like that. David, uh, that's probably the nicest I've ever seen him dress up right there. That's cool. Uh, Miriam, okay, uh, well, she's a photographer at this company, and she's got like a little artistic logo sort of thing. Again, I wouldn't quite do that, 
although if she's trying to promote if she's photographer at bitmap it appears that the icon maybe is holding a camera I can't quite tell what it is I think it's a camera maybe it's a handbag but again I that wouldn't be the best type of photo it is about a person okay right here Pete he's a coach he doesn't have to be in in a you know in a polo or anything like that he's in the coach gear that's great that's what I would expect for him and he's got a good smile there so that's a good photo for his industry his niche and um, you know going on like that so I'm sure this one he meant it to be rather artistic but this background is kind of fighting with him I would zoom in on him and there'll be some background but not this far out that's not a full body shot but that's too much so something like this good close composition good close composition so again literally you're going to be literally you're going to be the face of your of your business if you're using LinkedIn for that purpose um, that's the big idea again it's the person-to-person -person business connections so profile photo and top cover image could be used for fun or for business that's the photo that appears at the top a moment ago on mine it was a bunch of cables plugged into a, a, a router and such it's a technology photo <laughs> I'm a technology I'm representing a technology company so in my case having my own photo at the top of mine right here well that that gives you the sense of technology of, of internet these are all ethernet cables plugged into a switch there's the internet flowing through those cables it's technology I'm director of technology at PMD Interactive, so it relates in that case. If I kind of randomly pick someone, um, this is a third level connection. We're not connected directly, so Tom is technology leadership. Okay, he's got here something techy right there. I don't know, is it like data flowing through the internet right there? Who else can I see as an example? Now, they did get the notification. Victor Campos, look at your profile. That's okay. So, Brian. He's got his uh, location, I guess. He's in Atlanta, so I, I guess that's Atlanta. So that's just another place to uh, sh show a little bit about yourself, about who you are or what you're about. So director of technology at Neon, an FCV health company. So okay, molecules, I suppose, health. So that relates there. I guess they could follow. Is that the default? Yeah, I think mine has that too. Are you sure you're not a technology or, or health company? Pretty, pretty sure I'm oh, okay. okay, maybe it's the maybe it's just the generic LinkedIn one about connections, people connected to people. So don't do that. Uh, so with Manning here, um, you know, he, he's got his photo, looks good. Uh, but you've also got that spot there for further branding of yourself or your business or your industry, so you should take advantage of that the reason that he might not have it updated even though he seems to be active here he's got 500 connections and all this content is because LinkedIn changes once in a while and then they add a new feature and if you're not up to date well now you've got something that not exactly hurts you but it hurts you in that you are not taking advantage of what they're giving you here's the last one Gareth so okay showing here perhaps then a conference where he presented at so that's that's a good one so that's the part of the self-branding. And then the rest of this is, is highly then dependent person to person. There's going to be, when you edit your profile, you're going to be able to put your name, what's the headline you want to write here. You can write anything you want. Director of Technology at PIM Directive and Kitten Fan. Yeah, you can write whatever you want to write in these. But this is the stuff that's going to then get you found when people search, when they have, when they do search up here, and they are searching for kitten fans to do some sort of um, study or something, then I might appear. So you can write whatever you want here. It's it's all up in the air. Although you might want to use terminology of your industry, perhaps. What what would you call a person who does social media for a living for companies? Any opinions? 
What's the job title? Social media marketer is one I hear very commonly, so I might use that. Any other terms that people might have heard? What's that? Social media manager, yeah. Social media marketer, social media manager, yep, those are common ones I hear often. Any others? Sometimes I hear people call themselves social media ninjas or social media gurus. So because that industry is kind of cutting edge and, and fun and all of that, I've, I've heard those seriously on people's business cards and such too. So whatever is um, perhaps your industry niche, uh, use that terminology because that's what people are going to be searching for if they're trying to find people. Current position. <clears throat> so these are the various companies I've worked with and I still work with this college, Southwestern College, this other company, you can only pick one at a time. And that is tied together with a company that you have that you have ties with. I believe it does let you pick if you formally worked at a place, if you want to write that or select that. And it has all this other stuff. What is your industry location? Summary of experience. That's some of the basics. And there's all this other stuff about. Question? How do you get a, a, a photograph that you want to use as a background to that background space on the, on the page? Well, you have to transfer the photo off of the phone or wherever you have it. And then uh, once you edit, once you click that little pencil, you have then a further to edit to change that photo or a pencil to edit that photo. Yeah, I don't have the pencils up in that photo. Oh, sorry. I have one at the bottom, but that only takes me back to that page of we're on. Yeah. Here's, so this. Oh, there it is. The second page. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's one level deeper than what it was at the top here. So we've got these other sections that are optional. Uh, articles, experience, and so forth. So you're going to see add a profile section on the corner here. Add work experience, volunteer experience, skills, accomplishments, additional info. So under skills, accomplishments, etc. And you want to put as much as you you feel that is valuable to you to help you get leads or views etc. This is the digital resume. So just like you have references in a resume, it says references available upon request. Well, that's kind of old school. You want to have the references easily available for people to look at without the extra effort of more people going to ask for them. So um, that's something that uh, you will put in there that's valuable to you and make it public or private and such. But that's the, that's the main profile. Uh, we'll talk about creating content in just a moment. But any, any other questions, general questions on, on, a, pro, uh, on a profile? Okay, so, oh, one more thing. Remember I said my address, linkedin.com slash in Victor Campos. When you first create a LinkedIn account, it, it'll often be something like Victor Campos dash gibberish, just like, kind of like Facebook. So if you'd like the short name, if you want to claim that short name, you should see a link on the side over here edit public profile and URL. The URL is the address. That'll take you over to some more settings for you to claim your short name, sort of like your vanity address. Hey, yes? This is what I was asking earlier. There's a, <laughs> evidently there's 150 people with my name on LinkedIn. So <laughs> what do I do to differentiate? Uh, you differentiate yourself by filling in all of these fields. You go in here and you, you edit and fill in your headline and your position and education and everything. 
which will differentiate you from the other ones. Not not the other the other people are not going to have your same education. But if I, I just search for my name and it's like first guy came up was somebody else. Actually. Yeah, but there's nothing you can do about that because it's then up to the person to see your photo to differentiate you from the other person and what location you put and what experience you put and what job title you put. So yeah, people are going to see when they search a name, they're going to see everyone. And I'll do a search for myself in a moment to show that. But what will set you apart and hopefully get you found by the right people is all the details you filled in. Well, I'm in there, but I'm about the third page down. So I... Now, another thing about that relates to your activity. Uh, how active have you been on LinkedIn? None. Exactly. For a lot of us, we have an account, but we don't use it. And that's one of the reasons why we don't get found or get ranked very well, because we don't use it. We're not active. So the social network, the algorithm, determines it's not too relevant to show this person very highly because they're not active. And so most networks also, if you're active, will, will rank you better too. So LinkedIn, just like the other networks, I would say posting something once a week at minimum, every week, every other week, is a lot better than not posting anything for the last six months or years. So that, that brings me to, to the part about search and then also content. Well, let me do it like this, content. You use LinkedIn like other networks in that you post content about yourself or your business. Content is photos, video, links, articles, etc. I'm Victor's Bakery, and I'm Victor Campos, and I want to promote Victor's Bakery, so I'm going to post articles about food or recipes or baking. I'm going to post photos of our products with links to the products. Same thing that we've done in the other networks. That doesn't really change. I'll show you some of the specific uh, unique things about LinkedIn in a moment, but this is, this is the usual. So what you've done in other networks also applies here. You can post the same thing you've posted elsewhere, but a benefit Posting something unique to a network is to entice people to follow you or connect with you there. I'm already connected with you on Facebook. Why would I also connect with your business on Pinterest? Especially if you're sharing the same thing on every network. I'll just see the same thing on Facebook. I don't want to go off and create a Pinterest account. I already have you connected on Facebook. Well, one way to entice people to follow you on the different networks is to have different things on the different networks. Now, that is a lot of effort. Remember, I've said before, beginner, intermediate, advanced. Same photo, same text. Every network, intermediate, different photo, different or different photo, uh, same text. Every network, and then advanced, different photo, different photo, different text, different network. So every network has something unique, which is double the work, triple the work. But every network is unique, and then you have something in one network that people aren't seeing in another. So that coupon, putting that same coupon, that same link on all your three networks, where you have only one third of the reach, only on one network. If you do a, a uh, certain coupon on one network on Monday and then you do a variation on 
a different network on Wednesday and then you do a variation of it also on Friday on another network you then are hitting people in three fronts and potentially getting more more leads more impressions if you're going to be active often in any network you'll get writer's block eventually so you need inspiration of what to post colon search the place where you'll get inspiration so that search box like all the networks they search only in the network a Google search searches all over the internet a search on Yahoo or Bing searches all over the internet but a search in Twitter only searches in Twitter or LinkedIn only searches in LinkedIn so I can search for keywords in LinkedIn and I'll get a bunch of results of people or content which then I can use as an inspiration for myself so let's see that here if I search it says are you searching for people jobs posts I recently searched for chef just for curiosity I'll search chef again and the results are are you searching for chef related to people to jobs or to content I get under people 3 million 3.4 million results that the word chef is somewhere in their profile either their name or most likely their job title or one of their experience one of their items in their profile so chef Ava I doubt her name is chef but she put it there she's actually kind of doing it wrong even though she's number one so I guess it's working but you're not really gonna put your job title in your the spot where it says first name last name they're they're doing that Ava is doing it but then her her um, job title is personal chef and she's in San Diego so of course I can go preview her page and see what else culinary experience 30 years European American and global cuisine food and restaurant experience 18 years Okay, so here's someone that um, hit that criteria. And here's one with shared connection, so a second level. This is a friend of a friend. Okay, well, the inspiration part of it. I said jobs, etc. Content. I'm searching the keyword chef, keyword content. Now I'm going to get articles, tutorials news items inspiration for my own content But what's also valuable, valuable about the searching besides finding articles to inspire you, people. People that are liking or commenting on an article, that goes back to what we talked about with the other networks, that you can uh, connect with those that are being active. I can go check Amanda's profile, and there might be a reason to try to connect with them for me personally I don't really bother even looking at a person's account if they don't have their their photo there it's not a difficult thing to set up yeah I'm camera shy well uh, why are you being in a social network that doesn't look professional when you don't have something there besides the generic person and really it should be a portrait of the person 
oddly they put you know the name of their company there that further leads me to think this person didn't really set up their account that that well or correctly they seem to have their company name and they have their slogan for their company instead of like Amanda the person over here she says she's the CEO of it but this this account could definitely be improved <clears throat> maybe this other person here Alessandra so search you'll find articles on the topics keywords of your business to give you an idea of what to post in the future. Find people that are active, liking, commenting. People that are active in that topic. That you could connect with. So as I do search and get inspiration or get connections, then I've got actually share on home, share an article, photo, video, or an idea. So clicking there, I can start to write stuff, add a link, and um, that'll be shared. That'll be content that I put out there for uh, when other people search, I could be found. People could search up here. To find people, content, etc. And so if I'm creating content, if I'm posting like every other network, I will um, have the possibility of being found. I can attach images, I can do video. And we have something that's a bit more like a blog post, an article. You get a much more full featured editor instead of this sort of like quick I can write as much as I want here there's really no limit to what you can write here the limit is probably like 10,000 words no one's gonna write that much but that looks kind of basic I think it's more valuable to you more valuable for you to uh, use their system of like I had it there you've got write an article that gives you then a spot to put a, a nice graphic at the top promoting this uh, this article you've got then a way to do headlines write paragraphs style things add videos links and so forth bold bullet points all of that it's like a full featured article The basic post is too basic. I recommend write an article. You have more features and it's more professional. So that's one of the current big unique selling propositions, one of the USPs for LinkedIn. The other networks don't give you that sort of power. Facebook does have something similar. It's, I believe it's called a note. 
but LinkedIn it gives you this ability to create this article that, that looks nice. A nice cover photo, styling, bullet points, links, and all of that. You can't, can't really do that in Twitter, even though they've increased the amount of uh, text you can put into a tweet, it, it's not level. It's not the level to an article or a blog post. Pinterest is a lot focused on photos, so you wouldn't really do it there. And Facebook does have an aspect of this, but I don't think it's very popular. I hardly see people using it. But on LinkedIn, it's one of the things that'll differentiate you, so that I would I would use it. It's LinkedIn's blogging platform. Every article you write there has its own unique URL that you can share elsewhere. So I write an article in LinkedIn, and, and it's something like this. I don't know the exact structure but it'll be something like linkedin.com slash Victor Campos slash articles slash how to bake a cake dot HTML something like that so every article that you write will have its own unique address that then you can post on Twitter and get try to get traffic from Twitter or you can email it to people and get traffic there <coughs> so it's everything has a unique link And so it's going to be about, as usual, trying it, using it, making a draft, deleting it, practicing, being active about it. It's yet another social network, but it's in terms of a more professional one, where it's often people to people, and trying to forge meaningful connections, not just a numbers game about as many connections as I can. I recommend you weed out the network to really be connected to those that give you a value. Be active in it. If you're fighting with other victors, for curiosity, let's see other victor campos out there. So someone right, up, right over the border, victor campos. There's me, then another victor campos right here in San Diego. He's just a lot nicer than me, but uh, who else is there? Orange County, and a lot of people that don't have their logo, so they often get those that use LinkedIn a little bit more seriously and such, they automatically discount people that don't even have their icon there because that shows a lack of professionalism. There's all of these results Los Angeles, Texas. I often see results of people in Portugal and Brazil and such. Right there, Brazil. So. You want to differentiate, differentiate yourself by being active, filling out all of the fields, and taking advantage of using the, the network. So general questions on, on, on what we've talked about today? It is really about being active as much as possible. Yes? Um, well, I mean, that train of thought, this legislation without me. <laughs> We'll, we'll get the ticket back in a moment. So um, we're going to do a little lab time, then until 1. All of these notes that I've been writing, I'll put them into the folder. I'll turn the printer back on if you need it. These, this lecture that I've been doing today, I will upload it to my account. And if you'd like to watch the videos, you need to send me an email. I'll send you the link to the videos. And then you can practice this at home. And the big idea with all of this social networking really is about practicing it. I remember now. Yes. As far as getting recommendations, which is a big part of this, I would imagine, um, how do you go about soliciting a, a, a recommendation from someone you dealt with? I mean, do you send them a link, or how do they know where to go to? Okay, so. Do they, and do they have to be a member of LinkedIn to give you a recommendation? They definitely have to be a member of LinkedIn to give you the recommendation. And uh, the way it basically works here is, so you see I've gotten these recommendations already. There is a button for Ask for Recommendation, or there should be one. 
And that's tied into what sort of connections do you already have. So let me see if I can find someone. Oh, let me see. OK, I just added Jolene a moment ago. So it's going to go with who already has a LinkedIn account and who you have a connection with. If I'm trying to get a recommendation from Bill Gates, see, it's not even letting me do that. We're not connected one to one. So step one is they've got to have a LinkedIn account, and you've got to be connected. So, so like a Yelp account, that's, um, it doesn't work like that. It's about anyone can go on to your Yelp account. Yeah, Yelp is, is much more public. You don't have to have those one-to-one -one connections. You can get recommendations there from anyone. So I've got a business. I ask someone, can you recommend my business on Yelp? We don't actually have to be friends or anything like that on Yelp. They do need a Yelp account. I don't think you can do it anonymously. But then they recommend you there. Here, notice what else is further saying. How do you know Jolene? So even if I've requested 70 people to be my friend, um, then I have to say, well, how do we know each other? Right here. We've been managers. We work together. Um, work, work with... Student, taught, client, worked with in the same group. So then, okay, what was that position? So it, it is a lot more about right here. So you do have to, you get these because it's going to be a real recommendation, not just a former customer or something like that. You have to sort of like prove we have a connection. They know me. They're going to give me something meaningful from that recommendation. So then I ask them further. It'll just say generically, can you write me a recommendation? You probably want to fill that out more in detail about what kind of recommendation you want. And then they'll get the, they'll get the email. They'll get the message, the notification, and then they can choose to do it or not. Mm -hmm. One of the many reasons why I have a LinkedIn account is because I get so many requests from people who not only have been down for me to get a LinkedIn account. So do they go basically from the different contacts? Yeah. Um, a lot of these networks a lot of these networks ask you why not connect your Outlook address? Or why not why not connect your Gmail? And the point of that is that LinkedIn then wants to check who's in your address book so that then LinkedIn says, here's someone you know on LinkedIn, why not connect? Also, it goes, well, here's people that you're not connected with, why not connect? So all of these networks are trying to forge all of these connections between people. The ultimate goal of it is because all of these social networks are not there for the benefit of you. They're there for the benefit of themselves. They're trying to make money and such. The more people that get on the network, and then enough people say, actually, I do need the premium service. I do need to pay. On Twitter, it's going to connect with your address book to connect everyone, and eventually someone might want to use it as, a, as boosting tweets and such. So that's ultimately... It's not because we want to connect everyone and be friends and pals. No, it's we want to connect with as many people to possibly some of them will eventually purchase our services. And that the byproduct of that is that, yes, I get a bunch of emails of people wanting to connect with me. So that then takes the effort of doing cancel or ignore. And there are various settings that you can go to to try to minimize that. But the default often is that it is very open and everyone connect with everyone and too many emails sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to agree to that. Yeah. They ask, I say no. When you're setting up your account? Yeah. And, and various times they keep asking, don't you want to give us okay. access to your Yahoo account? Like, no. Yes. I don't want all those people to get an invite. I don't want to be connected with all of them. Mm -hmm. um, so exactly. So uh, there often is a little, really little button that says skip or cancel or no. There's a big button that says yes, connect, but then there's a little button that says cancel. <laughs> yeah, so you have to slow down. Yeah, it's off and on by default. Mm -hmm. And they send you at least three per person. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's the social and social networks, but sometimes it's too, a little too much. So always check your settings and read what you're clicking on. 
and that goes for all the networks. That's LinkedIn. I hope you uh, practice it a bit. I hope uh, it's valuable to you. It's yet another network. It's yet another thing to set up, another thing to manage, but uh, it could be beneficial. And even the free version of it has a value. Uh, the paid versions of all of these networks often give you a big jump start. But if you've got the time for it, using the free versions can give you results.